all right you're welcome back again today to our channel as usual we are going to be continuing in our practical series and then for today we are going to be determining the relative density of a solid using the principle of moments and to achieve that i need a one meter rule a knife edge and a set of mass one a hundred gram mass and one is an unknown mass and then i'll also be needing a beaker containing water and of course a loop of string that i'll be used to attach the mass on the meter room so the first step to take is to find the center of gravity of the meter room and to find the center of gravity of the meter room you have to firmly balance it on the knife edge and take the balance point now if you check the balance point of course this is a uniform um, meter room the balance point is actually expected to be around 50 or about 50 50 cm and that is what you have here so the balance point or the center of gravity rather is 50 cm i'll take note of that so having noted that down I'll not be expected to hang this mass labeled W at the 10 cm mark, at the 10 cm mark of the meter room. So I'm going to use a loop of wire and attach this um, mass at that particular point. Okay, here is it. The unknown mass is here hung at the 10 cm mark on meter room from the left side of the meter room, while the known mass mass is hung from the other end now the position for the unknown mass is fixed at the 10 cm given to you but the position for the um, known mass is is variable you can vary it you adjust the position until the meter rule balances horizontally take note that your meter rule must remain fixed at the center of gravity all through the experiment so the only one that you have to adjust is the known mass which is at the right hand side of the meter room so i am going to record the distance d from this 10 cm to the balance point or the center of gravity on of, of the meter room for the unknown mass and also i'm going to record the distance d1 of the known mass from the right hand side to also the center of gravity so i'm going to be repeating um, this this same experiment at different positions the initial one was at 10 now i'm going to put the unknown mass at 15 uh, and also at 20 and also 25 and 30. at these particular positions i'm going to still take note of the distance d from this unknown position to the center of gravity and of course uh, alternate or vary the positions of this of position of this known mass to find the balance point and then measure the distance from that point to the center of gravity so this is what i have for for 15. so you can see it's still balanced at that particular center of gravity and i'm going to take note of this distance from here to this point and record and repeat the same for 20 up until 30. so this is the unknown mass hung at the 20 cn mark on the meter room and this is what we have the meter is balanced horizontally and then um, I've already varied this position so that I can get that balance so it's still balanced at the 80 cm mark from the other end I would repeat this also for 25 so here is the mass hung at 25 cm balanced at the pivot at its center of gravity and here is the reading from the other part 75 so it means that d1 will be 75 minus 50 which will give us 25. so this is the last one um for air 30 cm is where the mass is being hung and also i have this one balanced at the 70 while the, i still maintain my center of gravity so i have taken about five readings in air i'm not going to insert this in water I'm going to quickly put up um, this particular mass in water the unknown mass in water and then i'm going to also take note of the new balance position of this um, known mass and i will record it as d2 
the distance from the balance point to the center of gravity and then i'll plot and i'll tabulate my readings and then i'll plot a graph i'll show you the theory how that we can be able to get the relative density of this particular solid so so here you can see that the the mass is fully immersed in water completely now i returned it back to the, the initial mark that's the 10 cm mark so my center of gravity is also still fixed and then I have the new balance point at 84. So it means that the D2 now for water is going to be the distance from this 84 to this center of gravity which is going to give me 32. So I'm, I'm going to quickly record that and now move this one to 15, 20, 25 and 30 and also find the D2 because this one is constant. So I'm going to find the D2 and then I'll plot my graph quickly. So here is it at 15, you can see completely, completely in water. Balance point in position, and then the new balance position, it is at 79.5. So I'm also going to find the difference from our center of gravity and record. So here is the 20th mark, you can see it here 20, completely immersed in water, balance point fitly, the center of gra gravity maintained, and then the new position is 75.5, as you can see. So I'm also going to continue to record the difference. So point number 25, the mass fully immersed in water, the center of gravity still maintained, new position 71. Can see it there. Finally, you can see it point number 30 cm still fully immersed in water, the center of gravity maintained, and then I have it at 67, the 67 mark. So I'm quickly going to compile my table and I'll come and I'll show you um, the theory behind this and I'll confirm to you the relative density of this unknown mass. So this is how our table actually looks like. The D, the D1, the D2, and D1 minus D2. And with this table, we'll be expected to plot a graph of D1 against D1 minus D2. The reason for that is because a graph of D1 against D1 minus D2 will give us um, a straight line graph through the origin who and the interpretation of that graph the slope of that graph would give us the relative density of the solid here is the theory now, if I call the weight of the unknown solid in air W A and call the weight of the unknown solid in water as W W and using the principle of moment you know that the clockwise turning moment is equal to the anti-clockwise turning moment. So I'm going to have it as WA times ED, which is equal to W1 times ED. That is from the other end, according to what I'd already explained before. If I make W a subject formula, I'm going to have W1 times D1 all over D. And I call that my equation one. The same thing I'll also do for the water. And then if I make a subject formula, I'm going to get W1 times D2 all over the D. So it means that since the relative density of a solid is equal to the weight of the solid in air over the loss in weight when in water. So it, that is going to give me the WA over WA minus WW equal to D all over D1 minus D2. So since WA over WA minus WW is equal to the relative density, so it means that relative density is going to give me D1 all over D1 minus D2. If I cross multiply, I'm going to have this. So it means that a graph of D1 against D minus D1, D1 minus D2 will have a slope that is equal to the relative density of the solid. So having done that, I plotted the graph and here is what the graph looks like. So the graph of D1 
against d1 minus d2 is a straight line graph as you can see that passed through the origin so this is what the graph gave me and it's, it's an accurate graph through the origin so if i now find the slope of this graph this is what i have so the slope of the graph gave me 6.4 6.4 so the implication of this value is that the relative density of the solid of, of, of which in this case is the unknown mass is 6.4 of course you know that relative density has no unit so um, that's why my value has no unit so the relative density of this my block or mass is 6.4 so that's all we have for today I, I, I believe that you will always keep in touch because we'll be bringing it here now and always the best educational resources that we need to thrive in any formal examination whatsoever. We believe that it has been of help to you. So we would encourage you to subscribe to our channel so that anytime we post any video, you can get an alert. Thank you and always for being with us. We appreciate. Please click the subscribe button to always associate. Thank you.